Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jaden and in today's video we are talking all about reducing your kitchen waste. In my own journey and research I've found that this topic of sustainability and zero waste living can be a bit of a touchy subject for some people. So I just want to put it out there right at the beginning that I am not fully zero waste. I'm nowhere close to it. I don't know if I ever will be mostly because of some of my diet and lifestyle choices that I'm not willing to give up. We all have different priorities in our lives and sometimes some of those priorities can kind of come into tension with each other. However, sustainable living and a lower waste lifestyle is something that I'm very passionate about and am on my journey towards. So if you're looking for someone that's absolutely perfect, this is not the video for you. But if you are interested in more of a practical and kind of like halfways on the journey, kind of video, inspiration, tips, all of that, feel free to keep watching. While I think sustainable living is very important and taking whatever steps you can to reduce the waste on our planet matters, I also think that it's a very personal journey and that it will look different for you than it will for me and that that's okay. So in today's video, I'm really just going over what I've done. I'm gonna show you some of the good, some of the bad, some of the areas where I'm still growing. My recommendation, if you're interested in starting a lower waste lifestyle, is to take a little audit of the things you purchase and the waste that comes out of your home. Figure out what the biggest waste producer is for you and then take little baby steps. Just choose one area, focus in on that area and master lowering the waste that you're producing in that area and then move on to another one. Take it really slow. I'm not interested in trying to jump on a bandwagon and have everything look super perfect and not be able to actually sustain the sustainable change. So for me, I've only made swaps thus far in areas and specific products and certain things that I feel like I can maintain forever. That may look different for you depending on your financial status or your accessibility and all of those things. So I think that's it for disclaimers. Let's get into this video. So I do live in a very small apartment in downtown Toronto. It's about 550 square feet. And so that has made it quite a bit easier for me to have access to certain zero waste items, but also I don't have room to store a lot of stuff. So I already live quite minimally and switching to zero waste for a lot of things hasn't been that difficult. So here's a quick overview of my kitchen. I've got this little island with some storage here, fridge, all of the cupboard space, and that's literally it. Starting with this cupboard right here. This is pretty much our pantry. So I have like all of our canned items, um, extra condiments that aren't in the fridge yet. This is a little kind of like oil and vinegar situation. So we've got apple cider vinegar, rice vinegar, sesame oil, that kind of thing. This is where I keep kind of bulk items like rice, popcorn, nutritional yeast, refills of all of those types of things, coconut oil. This is one of the areas that is a little bit iffy. Sometimes I get tortilla chips in plastic, sometimes I get them in a paper bag, just depends on what is on sale that week. And then this, this is a plastic oatmeal container that I've had for months and months and months and I refill it. So it's now bulk oatmeal, originally it wasn't. And then this, you know what that is. So this is one of those areas where I have had these for a long time and I'm just like slowly using them and reusing them until they die kind of thing. This is our little containers for oil, red wine vinegar that normally has garlic in it and then butter. I try and purchase all of this in glass. Obviously garlic comes without any packaging and then I just put it in there and all of our oils stay really accessible in that way and I love that. This is a silly one, but salt and pepper grinders instead of shakers. It's a lot easier to find peppercorns and like rock salt in bulk than it is table salt. These little canisters are all full of coconut flour, quinoa, and almond flour. I guess I could show you that if you want to see. Get a little low. This is kind of hard to show just because of how narrow it is in here, but this is just a fruit bowl. Obviously you can get a lot of produce without plastic and then I just store it there. This is where we keep like root vegetables, potatoes. Right now there's a sweet potato and some beets in there. And then this is some random stuff and I'll pull it out and show it to you one by one. Okay, first this one. So this is all baking supplies, essentially. Um, I've got raw cacao powder, and I just reuse the little scoop that comes with my Vital Proteins Collagen Peptides because 
I don't see the use in throwing it out after buying the package and just using it once. So I save them and I use them in other jars. It's just table salt that I use to clean my cast iron skillet. A lot of these jars are repurposed from other things that I purchased, which is one of the great things about using them for storage. You don't have to like buy them all at once. You can use them from pasta sauce and just whatever. Um, this is baking soda, brown sugar, raw organic cane sugar. This label is still on this one. This is from a local restaurant in Toronto that I sometimes get bone broth from. And then just desiccated coconut from the bulk store. Easy access for baking. And then this guy is quite self-explanatory. It's all of my reusable produce bags. I love these ones specifically with the kind of waffle knit. Um, I have several different sizes. This is the brand. I got them from Credo Bags in Montreal. Uh, just bought them online and then I also have these guys that are completely um, You know nothing can fall through them essentially They're really tight knit and so I would use those for bulk nuts or seeds and that kind of thing This one isn't really kitchen related, but I keep it here because the baskets match and I think it's really cute This is my cleaning products. So I might as well show you while we're here. I have all of these little amber glass jars and then again, I just labeled it myself and in here I have an essential oil concentrate cleaner mixed. So this is a really great all-purpose cleaner. It's great for stainless steel, it's great for glass, and I use it for all surfaces, essentially. This is like the only cleaner that I have in my house. Don't love that this comes in plastic, but it is a concentrate and it lasts me like over a year, so I feel like that's a win. And then these jars are full of Dishwasher cubes, again, not my favorite choice. I will be switching to just a powder or a liquid that I can purchase in bulk, but until these are gone, that's kind of the solution that I have. While we're here, I suppose I could cover the basic things, the most basic things that I could talk about. Uh, first is reusable water bottle. I take this with me everywhere. It's a swell bottle. I've had it for, I don't know, I wanna say four years, probably. It's not my favorite design. Um, I would love to get a new one, but part of this lifestyle for me is not just running out and repurchasing something when I'm just sick of the old one. Like this still works. It will still work until I actually have use for more than one. I'm just going to stick with this one. Reusable cups, reusable straws. I also have, I do recommend that if you get reusable straws, get a little cleaner because these can be like, if you use them for smoothies and stuff, it can be a little bit annoying but they are great to have around. This is my one and only reusable coffee cup. I love it, I love the design, I think it's beautiful. It does not keep your coffee hot. Like it has zero thermal abilities, but again, I don't see the use in having more than one. Here's another one that I'll show you since we're here. Um, this is a travel reusable straw. I love this thing, it's from Straw Hot Co. You just pop it open and it's a collapsible straw, which I think is so handy. I've gotten so much use out of this because it's nice and small and compact. So even if I'm not taking a backpack or a purse anywhere, like it fits in my pocket, you know, it comes with its own little cleaner and you literally, I just like rinse it through with water, kind of blow some air through it to dry it out and put it away. And this is not a purchase I have regretted. Another super useful thing when it comes to storing things is having some beeswax wrap on hand. This has replaced my cling wrap, which to be honest, I never used a ton anyways, but if I ever do have a need for it where I wouldn't just stick something in a jar or a container, this works pretty well. Um, it does kind of make your food smell a certain kind of way and you have to be careful when washing them so that you don't take the beeswax off, but I really like these. So this is my favorite drawer in the apartment, my spice drawer. Um, all of these little containers are from Crate and Barrel. They're just little glass guys and they've got like little hinge openings. And then I just got the label maker off of Amazon. That one's empty. But I love how they look. I love how easy it is to read and it's super easy to take them to the bulk store. So that is great. Now what we've all been waiting for, the fridge. So this is kind of an overview. I really should have done this like when the fridge was full. <laughs> right now I'm, I'm in need of a grocery shop, so bear with me. Um, top shelf, we keep leftovers, all obviously in our glass containers and a couple condiments. They all come in glass, which I love. I keep my nuts and seeds 
in the fridge just in glass jars some of these are mason jars and then some of them are repurposed spaghetti sauce jars and random stuff this is some sauerkraut that did come in plastic not my fave this is a mixed bag so we've got glass obviously for the garlic hemp seeds and um, that's Chost Foods avocado mayo, which does come in glass. And then these are just like little health things, ground flax seed and cashews that for some reason I couldn't get in bulk that day. Um, mixed some of this nut butters in glass, some of it is in plastic. You know, kind of is what it is. This is something both tempeh and tofu I have not been able to find plastic free um in a place that didn't like completely take my entire bank account and so that's another thing too is sometimes budgeting plays into it and that's just honest um a lot of vegetables though i love you can get without plastic and then i just keep them in a bowl eggs and cardboard most of the produce you can get without plastic except for these if anybody likes these snap peas and knows where to find them plastic free let me know um, and then English cucumbers. I hate all other kinds of cucumbers and that's just like something that I guess maybe I need to work on, I don't know. So here's a door, we keep all of our water in glass except for this guy. I use this to measure my amounts of water that I'm taking in the day. Oh, hold on. And so this is a water bottle that I got at an airport like over a year ago and I've just reused it and reused it and reused it. We do sometimes make our own nut milk and then keep it in glass, but when the nuts are getting wicked expensive or when it's just more convenient to buy it in cardboard, we will do that. Most of our condiments come in glass, except for this barbecue sauce, the mustard, and then a salad dressing back there. Protein powders and supplements don't come in glass ever, which is really frustrating. See, like probiotic, not in glass. This is a little bit of salami remnant, not cute. Sun-dried tomatoes and yeast. Okay, that is it. You didn't need a whole fridge tour, but you get the idea. The freezer is kind of the worst because, well, it just is. These are herbs that I froze, so like dill and stuff, and then I just keep them in these plastic bags and reuse them forever. Any plastic containers that I have from like previous, I just reuse to freeze fruit and stuff. And then we have silicone uh, ice cube trays. This is the worst drawer. I make these breakfast burritos for Shelby, um, and then I reuse the tortilla bag to like freeze them in all of our meat is frozen in plastic and then that's a plastic spinach thing that it was going bad so i threw it in the freezer that is a tip when my greens are going bad i just throw them in the freezer so that i can use them when i can use them and frozen fruit i have yet to find an affordable version that does not come in plastic so like i just said supplements never come in glass they all come in plastic and that kind of drives me nuts i only drink decaf and so i have yet to find a roast that's actually like a good roast and zero waste and decaf so we're working on that um let's see here we've got the grinder honey i get in bulk and put it in this little glass thing a lot of my favorite teas do not come in glass but some of them do obviously if you like loose leaf tea that works really well that tin is from David's Tea, and you just take it back to them and reuse it. I think that's it, guys. Maybe I'll set you down and we can debrief here. So that's pretty much it. I mean, it is quite a lot of stuff, but I've done it kind of slowly over time. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I've really focused on implementing things that I believe I can maintain forever. I think that's an element of sustainable living that gets lost in translation sometimes. I think it's important to ask yourself questions and to figure out if this is not only a sustainable practice for the environment, but if it's also sustainable for you to maintain as a practice throughout your life. I think that's it for this video. I just wanted to give you a quick kind of overview of what I personally do and have done, some of the swaps that I've made, and kind of just open the conversation on this channel because this is something that I'm really passionate about, even though I'm far from perfect. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know where you're at on your sustainability journey, if you're on one at all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative or inspiring. Give this video a like if you did enjoy it. It really supports my channel. And subscribe if you're interested in seeing more videos from me. I think that is it. I will see you in my next video. Bye.